and you are watching Leave It to Boomer. I'm Janet Zapala. My special guest today, he's a filmmaker, he's a writer, he's an author, Stephen J. Rubin. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Janet. Thank I you very much. I have to tell you, a lot of these movies people are going to remember, especially boomers, because they were huge hits. Featuring some really major stars. Steve McQueen, obviously a huge actor. Even today, people remember him. We watch his old classic movies. Steve McQueen was known for taking a screenplay and wiping out lines. As he got older in his career, he wanted to talk little, little bits and little bits. And, and why was that? It was, was because it he was able to act more with his, his actions? Steve McQueen was one of the, those Spire. actors who just could give you a look. If yeah. you watch the movie Bullet, about the, you know, the famous car chase in San Francisco, mm -hmm. just the way he looks and talks, that movie, minimum dialogue. Platoon is an interesting movie that you pointed out. Made in 1986, obviously directed by a wonderful director, Oliver Stone. And you call it a revelation. And I think Oliver Stone, by telling his own story, because Charlie Sheen was basically playing him, mm -hmm. he put a face on the Vietnam soldier. And I think after Platoon, it, the change in attitude towards our American veterans was very, very palpable. We talk about the Vietnam War, and it was the first conflict, as you mentioned in your book, to be featured nightly on television, on the television news. Vietnam was there on the nightly news. I know for a fact because we had a TV that sat on our dinner table, literally sat on the dinner or above the dinner table, and every night we saw those reports. And uh, people, um, I think that the television news business had more to do with ending that war than most people think because it was right there in the horror of it. If, if it had not been available to the average American, you wonder how much support they would have given to the anti-war movement. Uh, we were stunned by Saving Private Ryan. I always say that I bought a box of popcorn when I went into that movie, and in the first 30 minutes of that movie, I didn't touch that popcorn. I thought it would have been sinful for me to even munch on something during that opening landing sequence. Yeah, yeah and, and you saw in your book here, you've got photos of Spielberg in the water, you know, with his uh, hip waders on, and, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, he always gets down and dirty. I mean, going back to Jaws, when you watch a Steven Spielberg movie, you feel the tension at close-up range, and interestingly, there's a, there's a correlation between between Jaws and Saving Private Ryan, because when uh, when you're in the water in Jaws, you're right there with the shark. In Saving Private Ryan on the beach at Normandy, you're right there with Tom Hanks. Oh my God, you feel like you're ducking down against those hedgehogs trying to not to get shot. And they were on location there. It wasn't that they were on some movie set. No, no, that was shot in Ireland on a beach. They completely turned that beach to the hell of uh, of uh, Normandy, and they hired uh, I think 1,000 Irish Army veterans. I had an interesting experience with this project. Silent I, Night. Silent Night. I got a chance to produce my own World War II movie. We did this for the Hallmark Channel in 2002. It's become an evergreen for them. And uh, we were very blessed. This is a true story of a truce in the Ardennes Forest on Christmas Eve 44, where American and German combat troops entered a cabin run by this woman and uh, had a truce for 10 hours. And they broke bread together. They sang songs together. They became friendly. And it all truths to all really happened. We got Linda Hamilton to play the woman. We were nominated for four Canadian Academy Awards. Yeah, they, the St. Louis Dispatch says she's uh, that was one of her finest performances. Yeah, it was very. She was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it's a true story. It actually happened. Uh, you know, and it's one of those stories that sticks with you. Truce films have been talked about during World War One, where they played soccer between the trenches. This is a situation where men who were enemies became friends. And this will give you sort of an idea. Sometimes the darkest moments give birth to the brightest miracles. True. Sounds like the heart of the story. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Stephen J. Rubin, thank you so much. Again, author of Combat Films, American Realism, 1945 to 2010. Keep writing, keep doing what you're doing. It's fascinating.